Well, we would like to welcome you to our home. It's a little cabin in the woods. My name's Robert. I'm Dee Dee. And uh, we've been living in this little cabin for about five and a half, going on six years. Remodeling it while we live in it. But uh, I think we're finally ready to do a home tour. I think so. Yeah. I think it's about that time. So we live on 12 acres, bordered by a national forest. We live in this little 800 square foot cabin overlooking a creek. So this is the entryway as you come into the cabin and it turns into the kitchen and flows into the living room. At some point in time, I'm assuming it was an enclosed porch, we don't really know, some sort of an add-on to the cabin uh, over its long life. We don't actually know how old this cabin is. It has a 1950 question mark uh, somewhere back in the records, but we don't fully know the actual date that it was on here. I believe it's a repurposed building from somewhere on the bottom side of the house, on the boards, it actually says Crane Shed written on it. So I don't know the life it lived before it became this little cabin in the woods. So this area we actually opened up so that we could do the uh, L-shaped kitchen. Um, and we cut these beams out of some fir trees that were on the property about 100 feet that way that we took down. We have some more beams in here, same story. We, uh, we took them from a couple trees that were out that way. We made these countertops ourselves. These are a butcher block countertop. Oh, we didn't mill these ourselves. We just made them out of two by threes that we got at Lowe's. But uh, I really like the, uh, the, the tie in to the fir beams as well. We made the carcasses of the cabinets. Uh, we did actually order these doors made. Um, I, I do enjoy woodworking and I've done cabinetry uh, in the past. However, uh, just due to trying to get a finished kitchen after living in it for so many years, uh, we just decided to go ahead and pull the trigger and order some pre-made doors uh, custom fit. So this room actually originally was the kitchen in the cabin. So when I say kitchen, I mean that it had a bank of cabinets across this side and then one small upper cabinet in the corner. Um, it had a sink and a burning wood cook stove. It did not have any plumbing, however. <laughs> so there was an old hand pump on the kitchen counter that was used at some point that was tied into a spring here on the property. So when we decided to kind of redo the footprint of the cabin, we had the idea to make this into a bedroom because the ceilings are low and it feels a little bit small because of that. My thought was, let's go ahead and relocate the kitchen out into where the living area is and we'll make this into a bedroom downstairs. So I went ahead and I did built-in wardrobes on both sides. We put new windows and flooring in. There was a door right here that went to the living room originally. So we went ahead and closed that in and made that part of the shiplap wall there. So when we were remodeling this room, Robert talked about maybe sheeting the ceiling, but I really wanted to leave these support beams for the upstairs exposed because I felt like it just looked a little bit more original to what the cabin was. So we did leave it as is. I did a little bit of caulking and hole filling. Um, of course, everything has a fresh couple coats of paint on it, but I really like the charm that it adds to this room. One of the other things I really love about this being our bedroom is that we have an amazing view out these windows here onto the greenhouse and garden area. So this bathroom actually used to be a part of an enclosed porch um, and we decided when we needed a little bit of extra space for the living area that we would go ahead and finish enclosing this and then we'd make this into a master bathroom. And I think it's worked out really well because we're able to have a full-size clawfoot tub in here. Um, of course, shower. We have everything we need, even though it's a small space. And I think it turned out really great and it's a great addition to our master bedroom. It's also 102 degrees outside currently, so we have window units in. That is one thing we haven't gotten around to yet is putting in any type of forced air. We do have the wood stove for heating in the winter, and we just use these little window units for cooling. And because it's such a small space, those work just fine. So this is a very small bathroom. This is probably six by eight. And uh, when we first came and looked at the property, the ceiling was caving in on it. Um, There's water damage everywhere, uh, insulation hanging down. You could see through the roof and part of it. It was, it was really bad shape. So the very first thing we did is there was already a toilet in here. That was like the only plumbing pretty much that was in the house. It was like January and I took a week off of work and I 
cut at the top of the roof, redid the roof, uh, kills everything, put a toilet in here, and it was so cold, we were staying in our fifth wheel, and uh, we're like, as soon as we get a toilet in this uh, cabin, we're just, we're moving in, it's too cold in this trailer. Got the toilet in, didn't have anything, it was just bare studs, but the toilet was in here, we put a heater in here so nothing would freeze. We cranked up the wood stove that was in the cabin and we moved in so we could get out of that freezing cold trailer, but uh, it was pretty primitive in the beginning. Um, so this area um, was a, was the porch, I believe, when we moved in here. And uh, we just uh, put some windows in. Uh, they already had electrical and everything in there. So we just uh, kind of enclosed it and added the living room space um, because there's not much space in this cabin. <laughs> so when we moved in, we had an old, I think the brand was Ashley. We had an old wood stove here. However, after a winter or two, it didn't burn very efficiently. Um, so we decided to replace that with this wood stove. It is a little bit oversized for the cabin, so it heats it up very quickly, but we love it because it stands up on a pedestal somewhat. There's room for storage underneath that, and it's got really great heat shields on the back and the sides. I've heard people argue that that doesn't make sense to have heat shields on your wood stove. However, the majority of the heat is coming off the top of your wood stove. So with having the heat shields on the back and the sides, we had tighter tolerances. So we didn't have to have it protruding into the room as much as a different wood stove would. So we actually really love this. It burns really efficiently. We love that it has storage underneath for wood. Um, and I like that it sits up a little bit higher. So overall, we love this little thing. I believe it's a Quadrifier 3100. We bought it at our local coastal farm and ranch. So we did a circular 180 degree return staircase centered around this eight by eight by 16 foot, we'll just call it a tree. We milled it from about hundred yards uh, to the west of here and um, <laughs> wanted a big kind of statement for the for the stairs so um, that's that's our cinder piece for the stairs it's basically a tree i thought i'd get square edges out of it but as i was milling it i realized that we had a little more weight in the edges but just went ahead and left it and uh it's uh we've enjoyed having that kind of as a centerpiece for our stairs so i made all the doors to the cabin um we were working with a, a very low ceiling on the front side as you enter uh, I was going to get a standard door, but we'd have to cut it down a little bit anyway. So I just went ahead and made my own cedar doors. And while I was making them, I went ahead and made this little closet door, but it's cute as can be. And uh, we just kind of made it to match uh, the other doors in the cabin. It hides a bunch of our utility stuff, like our, uh, our, our Swiffer sweeper and uh, the vacuum and some of that kind of stuff. And uh, it's still pretty... Still pretty bare inside, just like the cabin was originally. This is pretty much what the cabin kind of looked like, was uh, some shiplap, uh, just bare wood in a lot of places. So the stairs are made out of two by eight fir boards. We did not mill those ourselves from the property. We did purchase them, but I like it because they match the fir beams that are throughout the cabin. Um, and so that worked out really well. And then we used carriage bolts on the sides which were kind of tricky for Robert to put in, but he indulged me with that because I really liked the look of the carriage bolts in them. And then we just caulked the seam in between and then painted it and sealed it. And all of the stairs are sealed with a like polyurethane. So overall, we really like the look of it and I think it just ties in really well with the rest of the cabin. So this is our little upstairs bedroom. This is actually where we kind of moved in and put our bed when we first moved up here. This was our bedroom while we were remodeling a bunch of the downstairs before we got the downstairs bedroom uh, done up. So um, it's very hot in the summer and very hot in the winter. Uh, so uh, we usually have a little window AC in here, but um, served its purpose. It, it's, uh, it's pretty, me being a tall guy, it's very short, you know, on the edges but uh, it worked for, for the time we needed it to, and, and now it's a little additional bedroom where we have our, our office area set up. There are a few things we're still finishing up. I do need to finish a closet door for our closet that we just built in. At the landing for the stairs, I still need to do a closet door there also. And there are two more doors that I'm gonna build, two more cedar doors that I'm gonna be building in an upcoming video. And uh, we need one up here and one in the bathroom downstairs and those will be the last two doors 
uh, to finish up the cabin. So we just built in some cubbies. There's a little shelf area here. This will have a door, a uh, closet door on it. And, and then behind me is an attic storage space. We keep a lot of our miscellaneous stuff in here that uh, can't really go up in the shop, but needs to be kept in a somewhat controlled environment. This is our little utility area. This is our hot water heater, and it's just powered by propane. That powers both our on-demand hot water and also our uh, kitchen stove, which uh, we love having a gas stove. And this little ream hot water heater has been phenomenal. It's uh, it's a trooper. We got that almost at the beginning of moving in here. It's been a hard working uh, unit, so we've been very happy to have that. When we first moved into the cabin before we had our well drilled, we actually were pumping uh, water up from the creek into an IBC tote and then uh, had a pressure tank and was plumbing that all into the cabin from there. And we had our little hot water heater running um, as well off of that uh, to heat the hot water for the cabin. And it, kind of a temporary setup until we were able to finally get everything plumbed uh, and tied in properly. Living in something while you're remodeling it is, is very difficult, especially a small space to live in and remodel. It would have been much easier just to tear this little cabin down, but uh, really enjoyed the process of, of uh, bringing it back and turn it into something nice. Thank you so much for joining us today on our tour of our little cabin in the woods. If you're not already subscribed, we'd love to have you as a part of our channel and uh, we'll bring you along on uh, whatever it is that uh, we're working on next. Thanks again for watching. Take care. We'll see you soon. Bye.